Uh, now, it's always wonderful to see you, and I have to commend you. You did such a great job in this. And Thank you. My goodness, you know, you, well, is it a no-brainer when Clint Eastwood calls and says, you want to be in my movie? Pretty much, definitely. I, I, it had been a personal dream of mine for a long time. I'd wanted to. Um, you know, I've always said that film is a director's medium, and you want to get, you want to be in the workplace with, with great directors, you know, and there are teachers. They're, it's all about their vision, so... So you got to team up with the right guys, and he's one of them. What was it about him? Why do people just clamor to want to be on his sets? It's no nonsense. You just get in it, get into it, and get it done. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, just sometimes you can get really bogged down in, in endless discussion. And he just wants to move. He wants to get it done. He's got really good instincts. Um, and it happens fast and effortlessly, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it was it was great. I wish I had more days on the set. I, it was really my whole part was shot in three weeks. So. Amazing experience, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Helen and, and how much did you know about J. Edgar before going into this? Project? Not a lot. Not a lot. Um, pretty much nothing at all. Just that I knew who he was. Um, but first, I will say that when my agent told me it was a story about Hoover, I thought it was about the president, Hoover. And then he mentioned his lover um, was going to be played by Army Hammer, Hammer, and I was like, mm, oh, okay, <laughs> this is a different. <laughs> so, um, but I didn't know, yeah, anything about the Clyde Tolson. I didn't, certainly didn't know a thing about Helen Gandy. So it was, yeah, I learned a lot. So what kind of research did you end up doing for her? Well, um, a lot was there in the script, but I, they sent me this great package, you know, massive package of endless DVDs, a lot of documentaries, a lot of uh, stuff on the FBI, on Hoover himself. Um, there's books, you know, stuff from the internet, YouTube, a lot of stuff like that. And I was always kind of trying to find more about Helen Gandy, but, you know, the very nature of her job was to be in the background of this man, man's life. And um, there was a couple of photographs, not much at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, so it was about piecing it all together. I did manage to find this, the transcript of her testimony in the Library of Congress through a friend who, worked in, in, who works in government. Um, and that was actually one of the most telling pieces of information that I found um, because it just again reiterated what was already there on the page, her level of commitment to him, her, her absolute need to service her country, sense of duty, um, and even way after he, was, he had passed away and um, her career was finished, she still kept her word. Yeah. Which was what not an amazing relationship the two of them had. Yeah. I mean, really, like you say that she, you know, she was working for her country, and but she stood by him for what, what, fifty years? Yeah, yeah, I know. And that was my big question: How? How do you do that? Is that really um, just because you're serving your country, or is it? Does she have a place in her heart for him? I don't. You know, yeah. again, that those were all my decisions to make up. There, it wasn't. There weren't any facts available about her personal life and beliefs and. Yeah, it was really fascinating to watch. Um, your makeup process must have been, what, hours? Hours. Hours and hours. And, you know, even before getting on the set, you, you had to go through getting head casts and um, to create the molds for them to make the pieces. And that it's just time-consuming and very much testing your patience and claustrophobic and, yeah. Yeah. Oof, Not gosh. easy, but... but Great that we were give, all given the opportunity to play this passage of time n and not have to divide it up between six actors instead yeah. of three. Yeah, what an amazing, amazing. Now, Leonardo, I, was, I don't even, I, there's not enough I can say about him. He's so spectacular in this movie. Yeah. He just hits it out of the park. When you're working with him so closely in a movie like this, what was it when you, you, know, you stand by and you watch him and go, what impresses you about a guy like that? He's so impressive. His work before was, you know, had. Uh, time and time again blown me away. Um, he's got great range, he's got great charisma, just wildly talented and then being on a set with him you know just escalated my um, my admiration for him. He's, he takes his work very seriously, he works really really hard. We, neither of us really left our characters 
Um, not that there was much time to anyway with Clint, the, the speed he moves at. Um, he obviously was working with a dialect, he was working with the, the changes in his physicality um, and you know, it was, it, I, it, I just every day couldn't believe. I mean he had pages and pages of dialogue that you have to do in front of lots and lots of extras and he never made a mistake. I never saw him make a mistake. Um, you know, we were just talking to earlier about you know being a mom and stuff, and I'm just wondering how does that um, make you choose what projects you do now? Does it make a difference to you? Absolutely. I mean, not so much in the oh my kids um, wouldn't understand that character or what that movie's about. I, hopefully, when they come of age, they will be able to understand my creative decisions for doing things. But the practicals of, you know, where's this going to shoot, how long, um, and how's it going to work for the whole family, and how are they going to be out of school, and um, when is Liev working, you know, those things are, are definitely are major parts of, of making decisions. Well, you made a great decision being in this one, I have to say, you did a really outstanding job, and it's always lovely to talk to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, thanks, thanks so much. Thanks.